Good morning. Today's, Welcome to the kitchen. Yeah, we're in the kitchen. Today's video is gonna be, I think it's essential because coming soon we're gonna have some different pie recipes on this channel. So I wanna do pie dough first because this is the basic, okay? This is basic pie dough. We don't do store-bought pie dough in this house. We make our own and this is how. All right, I'm gonna hold the camera for this. And this is the star of the show right here. This is our baker. So Here's tell us. the star. Yeah, butter. Butter. <laughs> so tell us, walk us through what you've got. Um, I have butter, flour, shortening, because I like to use a mix of butter and shortening. Um, you need a little bit of salt. You can put other seasonings or even ground nuts in your pie dough. And I don't do that because we do have friends who have different allergies. So, you know, I just keep it simple and just use the flour, the butter, the shortening, and then a little bit of salt. And I like a nice big glass of ice water because you got to have moisture to bring it all together. And I will make a great big batch of it and then I will form it into balls of dough. It works better if you refrigerate it for a period of time and you allow it to rest. It's a non- um, leavened. Non-leavened, thank you, uh, flour, dough. It's not going to rise. There's no, no yeast in it, no uh, baking soda, baking powder in it. So it's a flat bread, but your crust is going to, you want it to be flaky, so you need, you know, shards of butter in it. And I like to use a grater. If your butter is nice and cold, you can grate the butter in there. And then the flour and the butter will make different layers so as it bakes you'll get that light fluffy because it steams and, and separates and separates now one thing that a lot of people do with some kinds of dough um, is they will overwork it this is not a bread dough so you don't want to knead it you want to get it together like a quick bread and you don't want to over stir it so once it comes together you want to see those flakes of butter or shards of butter through there. And I like using the uh, butter flavor, what do they call this, shortening? Shortening, yeah. vegetable shortening. Yeah, we're not being sponsored by anybody, so <laughs> give out any names. But I like using a mixture of shortening and butter because this also adds a little bit of flavor and a little bit of extra texture to it that you don't get with the butter. Sometimes with the butter, if you just use the butter, it's gonna be too crumbly. Mm -hmm. So I can go through some of the issues that you can run into depending on if your, you know, pie dough is too doughy or if you've got a soggy bottom, you know, what problems you may be having and, you know, it could be your cook temperature, could be not enough water, could be too much shortening. So it is kind of a formula and that you have to have some pretty close to accurate amounts but you know you're not building a rocket this is not nasa we're making pie dough you're just making pie dough <laughs> and so my dad grew up in the depression and uh, he my dad taught my brother and i how to do a lot of baking and do a lot of cooking my mom cooked a lot my dad baked a lot and he was the oldest of i don't know seven or eight nine kids they had he had several Half brothers, several, a couple of full brothers. He had several um, half sisters and some step siblings. And so that's why when I say there was about that many kids because they were coming and going. But he was the oldest at any rate. And during the depression, they just didn't have a lot of extra staples. And so he would make something because it was his responsibility to cook for his siblings while his parents were working and he would me mess something up and so he would go out in the yard and he would feed it to the chickens so <laughs> that the evidence of his mishap would disappear and his his grandma would come in the house and wonder what are those chickens eating he's like, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and he'd just start all over again but if he knew that he had been feeding things to the chicken because he had you know, messed up in the kitchen, I think he would have been in some trouble for because it was hard to come by some of that stuff during the depression. But he never got excited or worried when my brother and I had a mishap in the kitchen. He would just tell us to go feed it to the chickens. And it was, it was all good. So don't worry if you have a mishap. Flour is cheap. 
Butter is pretty inexpensive. So. Speaking of flour, can you tell us what kind of flour you're using? Do you um, use a special kind of flour? I like using just the standard um, flour that is not a bread flour. It's an all-purpose flour. Okay. Do you use a brand name? Um, I like a brand name. Do you think it than, makes a difference? I do think it makes a difference, and I also think the age of your flour definitely makes a difference. Some people don't even sift their flour. I like to sift. You know, they have the, the hand sifter. This is a really old-fashioned sifter, and I like it because you just, you know, kind of shake it. So. And if you don't have one of those, you can just use like a mesh colander, can't oh, you? Oh, yeah. You just pour your whole sack in a mesh colander and then just, you know, run your spoon around in it, and you're going to get it out. And what that kind of does, you don't get many lumps. I mean, these, our flour is really well done now. So what you're mostly doing is... You're adding the flour, a little air into it, and you're kind of separating those particles because it's been jammed in that sack and smashed with a bunch of other flour. It's settled a lot and in the bag. Trucked across the United States, but you want one that's, you know, right now you're going to not find any that are like outdated in the store because the turnover is rapid. But if you've got an old one in your pantry, you might want to mix it a little bit with a new one. If it's way past its outdate, you know, feed it to the chickens or just dump it. <laughs> just you know? throw it away. Just throw it away. But um, if it's, you know, within the outdate and you're thinking, oh, it's a little old and it doesn't smell bad. Flour should not smell rancid. So if it smells bad, it's got to go. But um, I use the all-purpose flour because of the gluten content in it. You don't want it to lock arms. You don't. You want it to form sheets so that when that butter boils inside of there and that steam escapes, that those layers separate so you have a nice flaky dough. All right. So what's the first step? Well, for me, I like to put the flour in. I like to layer the flour and the butter and put a little bit of salt in there. So I'm, I've just got some... Uh, opened flour and what I'm going to do is just put two cups of flour. I, since I'm going to do a lot of baking, I will go ahead and um, do you need to go out? Is that what that's all about? Are you sassing us? <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to wash my hands just one more time. Just to make sure they're clean. Yeah. And I always like to wear dark colored clothes when I work with flour so people can see the evidence. That so I they all working. know that you have been baking or working with flour. <laughs> now your butter was in the fridge or in the freezer? Uh, mine was in the refrigerator. That's firm enough for me without being so stiff that you can't hardly grate it. Okay. Now it's, it's easier to obviously, you know, um, put your butter on a plate than it is to kind of hold it up in the air like this. But the problem I have is usually your plate, unless you've kept it in the refrigerator, your plate is also going to uh, be warm and it's gonna melt your butter pretty quickly. But see how that just... Looks like cheese, yeah, but it's butter. but it's butter. So you've got two cups of flour in there and then... A stick of butter. Just one stick of butter? One stick of butter. Yeah, I'm um, sure you can get the exact proportions if you just want to make like one pie crust. I feel like it's a lot of work to make pie crust. Have you ever made just one pie in your whole life? Have you yeah, ever made just one? Probably I have. And you've made pie dough for just one pie? Yeah, probably I have. When <laughs> I lived in the apartment, I'm sure I did. Okay. Because I even baked when I was in college. Okay, I've just never seen you make one pie. It makes such a mess, why would you want to do just one? And then once you make one, then all your neighbors want one, and you can think of all these people that you want to give, give a one pie to. to. Oh, they did something nice for me, I want to do something nice for them. And pie, and then just kind of stir it around, and see how it looks? Get those shards of butter in there, and they get coated with the flour. See how nice that is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's a little bit left, and and I'm a scraper. I apologize to people who are not scrapers or ask why are you not a scraper. Shame on the Food Network for not scraping yeah, the bowl. Yeah, for not scraping the bowl. <laughs> so I will put. I'll then do the same thing. I'll put another layer of flour, and I'll uh, put another uh, stick of butter in there. But I want to get this. This flour, I've got some nice new five pound bags 
that I'm gonna open. Here's one he almost got away. Flake of butter? Flake of butter, yeah. And the countertop has just been cleaned, so you don't need to worry about that. No, it's really nice and smooth. It's a beautiful countertop. I love this countertop, and yes, just clean. It's fresh and, fresh and clean. Here's a new sack of flour. All purpose flour. Because the one she just used was that, that she just killed older? was old, and this one is also old. But I don't want to put them in the same batch. I'm going to use that one, and I want to get rid of him. But since I've got a, a flour that he's not expired, but this one I literally just got from the store, and his expiration date is uh, July of 22. So I know he's fresh. And that one was not quite two cups. So I'll put two more cups. But see just how fast that is? Mm -hmm. That's just like lightning speed. Well, and it's important to sift it. You don't have to, but you should. I think it makes it better. More butter. Keep the butter in the fridge to keep it from getting hot. Mm -hmm. And yes, your fingers are gonna get butter and Take off all flour. of your hand and wrist jewelry. It's just a bad idea to wear yeah. rings like the Pioneer Woman does. <laughs> Well, that's another one of those things where I think if you're wealthy, you can be eccentric and get away with it. When you're poor, people just think you're crazy. But that it just looks like it's gone pretty fast, fast too. Yeah, it, it does. Now, I do have a purling tool that I will use, as you'll see when I get this bowl full. Butter has gone down in price. Now, just before the holidays, butter will probably go up. So we like to wait till it's on a kind of a low and butter keeps in the freezer. So we'll stock know, up, stock up and get several. Buy a bunch, yeah. keep it in the freezer till we need it. And then I'll stir that around in there again. Get it all coated. Get, yep. Get a little flour on all that butter. Yeah. I like getting it out of here just because I know it's going to get so, really soft mm -hmm. and before it gets too soft, um, I like to get the flour on it. So it's, I have um, a stick of butter for every two cups of flour, and then I will put an equal portion of shortening in there. And I usually do four sticks of butter, so a pound of butter and a cup of the Crisco to, um, five, well, I guess it'd be 10 cups of flour, and then just the right amount of salt and some water to bring it all together. Stick number three of butter. Mm -hmm. Now I used to, um, you know, they tell you use really cold, cold butter and you're supposed to cut it in. And I used to, you know, try it with a knife to cut it. I don't know, I just got lazy and I thought I'm gonna grate the butter. You do something long enough, you figure out a better way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the better yeah. way. Now this is not a low carb or keto food. No. <laughs> no. It's like snow, isn't that pretty? Yep, makes me want to sing that song from White Christmas. Because it's pretty much equal portion of the butter and the shortening. Now, and I know you can, just like making cookies, you can use all butter and you get a more buttery uh, cookie that's more crunchy or you can use all shortening and you get a chewy cookie. chewy cookie, or you know you can use a little bit of both and kind of get a little bit of advantage of both of those. Mm. This is getting me so excited for pie season. Yeah, well, my coworkers are all excited about pie season and the baking that's going to begin. Yeah, you've used this enough to know exactly how much you can put in there, how mm -hmm. much pie do you can make at a time. Mm -hmm. And you're not baking unless you get flour all over the countertop. Mm -hmm. So all over the floor. that's 10 cups of flour, four sticks of butter, and here goes a cup of shortening. Yeah. Or so, about a cup. Yeah. I used to measure exactly, but I don't anymore. No, you're not if, grating this. No, because this is too gooey. So you're going to use your other cool tool now? Yeah, I'm going to use my other cool tool now. There, that looks like about a cup, doesn't it? Good enough for me. Okie doke. Okay, so at this point, I like to put my salt in it. And if you want to put a little sugar in your dough, uh, sometimes it does help. 
So you gotta remember, this is for several. This may look like a lot of salt, but this is for several. It looks like about a tablespoon and a half to me. Yeah. Tablespoon? Yeah, about a tablespoon. But I like putting it in there before I pearl the dough. Now, I don't know what other people call it, but that's what we always call it, was pearling the dough. And I call it that because that's what my dad called it. Can you show us your tool? So it's like a fork, like a pastry. Like lots of, yeah, pastry knives. Uh, it's one of my favorite because it, it's not really sharp. So it's not like you're gonna cut yourself with it, but it's there no. to cut the butter into the flour. Yeah, it's not sharp at all. And I have seen some that look just like wires, four or five little wires. And for me, because I grate the dough, this is more of just kind of a mixing process to get everything stirred up and then cutting in the softer stuff. But you want your dough to be, they say a mealy, con mealy texture but you can still see some of those shards of butter in there. Now, if you wanted to make biscuits, this would make really good biscuit dough at this point. You just put your milk and your leavening agent in there. And some black pepper. Yeah. Have your thick cut bacon going on the stove. Mm-mm. I'm -mm. gonna make sure you get all the way down to the bottom. And like there, there's a wad of that Shortening. Shortening, so I want to get that kind of cut up. Now at this point, yes, you could over mix it. You, you could, you know, get it to the point where it's too tough, but mostly that's going to happen after you add your moisture. And some people use, you know, um, maybe cream or milk, you know, especially A if you're making... dairy product. Yeah, dairy product, especially. But I just use water. The cold thrust, water, right? Ice cold water, because you don't want your butter to melt. Um, the star of my pie is to be the filling, not the crust. You want people, when they eat the crust, that it's light and flaky. And they say, oh, that's you know a light, flaky crust. You don't necessarily want your crust to outshine your, your filling. But this is a universal pie dough recipe that you can use for pretty much any pie that you want this kind of a dough for. And you can see some of it, you can work it in with your hand. But that's nice mealy texture, consistency. And that's how we want it to be. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're gonna feed this to the chickens. <laughs> Next is your water. Uh-huh. And I like to kind of, you know, get my water sprinkled out around everywhere. There's no good way to do this. I, I like the ice water, but the ice cubes, sometimes you have to kind of fight with them. Now the water has to marry to the flour. So you got to kind of stir it and give it a chance to set and to rest, but you don't want to over stir it. And so that's why I like to just gently remix and keep adding the water. About a what, couple tablespoons at a time. Yeah. And you can already see that it's beginning to, you know, start to show some sheeting. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. How that's sheeting, and you can see the butter in there, and a little bit of the shortening. But this is where you just don't want to be in a big hurry. You kind of need some patience, which is not something I excel at. No, but this is good practice for you. This is very good practice. And you don't want to leave out the dough that's at the bottom. See how that's, that's really what you want to see there is how that's, when it all looks like that, you know, you're, you're ready to make, make it into balls. Dough balls. Dough balls. Getting closer. Yeah, much closer. You don't want it to be wet or sticky. 
No, it's kind of going to be a little bit sticky anyway. But I'm, you know, I just want to make sure I get all of that loose flour incorporated. From the bottom. As, yeah, from the bottom as best I can. But I don't want to just, you know, stir it like you would a batter. Right, because that'll overwork bad. it. Mm -hmm. You want to preserve those flakes mm -hmm. that you're making. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, I'm hoping, is good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let this rest for a couple of minutes while I get my uh, parchment paper or my wax paper out. Okay. So she's finishing up over there. I'm going to go ahead and start tearing her some sheets of wax paper. A lot of people will say you're not supposed to use wax paper. Um, we're not baking the pie in the wax paper. If you're using it for something cold, it's fine. It's like using those beeswax reusable, like... Um, sheets for food it's okay if it's cold you're not melting this you're not putting this in the oven if you're gonna bake use parchment paper but for this that's going in the freezer or in the refrigerator wax paper is fine she just went and got a great big Ziploc bag so we'll show you the process of her dishing that up onto the wax paper and then the way that we store our pie dough until we're ready to use it I'm just tearing her off some sheets that she can wrap her dough balls in. How big do you want them? Is that big enough? Yep, that's perfect. Okay. I usually start with like six. Okay, that's three. Four. This is a really good activity to do with kids because you're measuring, you work with fractions, you're counting. And it's really important to encourage your kitchen help and tell them, that's perfect. Yeah. You did that perfect. That's perfect. It does really mean a lot when she says that I did a good job. It's perfect. Yeah. So she's got her uh, bowl of dough, and she's going to start forming dough balls. She's just kind of scooping it out of there. I think you can see. Yeah, you can see. And she's mashing it together. But I'm not... Um, kneading it. Yeah, I'm not kneading it. She's I'm mashing, just squishing it. Mashing the air out, but not kneading it together. It's not Play-Doh. So she's giving me a dough ball, and I'm gonna wrap. Wrap it up and kind of squash it flat. There you go. And you can feel when you're putting this together, you can feel there's some wet areas. That's okay. Um, just do your best, you know, to try to match the wet up to the dry. So that there's a dry place that can absorb the wet. The moisture. Yeah. And that's kind of why you like to let it rest. Even if you're just going to make it this morning and you're going to use it this afternoon or tonight, it's really good to let it rest for a little while and let that flour absorb that water without having to stir it too much. I know we do a lot of stir, stir, stir. This is not something that you do that to. Nope. Minimal stirring. <laughs> yeah. Gentle mixing. And I'm using really kind of flat handed technique to, to bring that together. Yeah, even like you can see on this, how it's not, it gets flaking apart here in the wax paper just because it's not kneaded together. It's just sort of pressed together. And that's all you need to, be, to do with this right now. So it felt a little bit dry now that I'm getting down to lower parts of the bowl. So I want to toss it a little bit, kind of with, again, with flat hands and put a little water in there and toss that around. Oh, you can smell that butter. It smells really, really good. Really good. And it is raw flour, so we're not supposed to eat it, but I can't, we have. I can't <laughs> help but want to. Yeah. So I want you to see now that I get down here into the bottom, you can see that 
is holding together well, that's holding together well. And I don't usually pick through it like this, but because I'm trying to, you know, demonstrate this to you. All right. So you can see how some of this is not holding together well at all down here. It just looks really clum uh, crumbly. It looks dusty almost. Yeah. You've got big clumps of pie dough that are, you know, worked together Hold like together that. together very well. Yeah. But then some of it is just really not. fine, really dusty. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a couple of those out and make, put them together. And you can see the flakes through here. You can see, you know, some of those shards of butter mm -hmm. that we had originally kind of as they streak through there. But I'm going to take this opportunity to put some more water in on this stuff because it definitely needs a little bit more moisture. And then I'm probably going to need, I bet you there's two more dough balls left in here. So she's going to add water to that. I'm going to tear a couple more sheets of this. So you got a little stuff stuck on your fingers and there's a little stuff kind of stuff on the end. And what you want to do is you want to use your hand kind of like a paddle to kind of, you know, gently toss that stuff around in there, kind of keeping your fingers, maybe not like right next to each other, but not using them individually to squeeze with, but just to bring that together. Like you're mixing meatloaf. Yeah. So see how nice that looks? It looks much better already. Yeah. And you didn't add much to that. Uh -huh. Can you tell us how long this pie dough keeps in the freezer? Um, in the deep freezer, I think it's probably good for several months. I know we will make these and I will use them. This is, um, er, this is mid October and I will easily use these into February. But just keep them in your deep, deep freezer, not in your refrigerator freezer but keep them in the deep, deep freezer so they don't get humidity on them. And um, see, I'm just kind of gently patting that and kind of forming it. And as I do, the little pieces come off of my hand. For the most part. Yeah. But you can see how there's like these little uh, flaky things. That's exactly what's gonna be in your, in your pie dough. Now I like to rinse it between each batch. So you start with a fresh, clean bowl. bowl every time. Now I know some people don't, but I think this stuff can get tough. Yep. Now we've got a great big, I think this is a two gallon Ziploc bag. And I'm gonna write on here, pie, dough, and I'm gonna put the date, October Just 2021. Just put 10, 10 slash 21 is good enough. Yeah. Just because we wanna know when it was made and how long it'll be fresh. Now, a lot of people will mark on the bag, good until, Yeah. I just like to tell myself when we made when it. When we made it, and then we can make that decision. Yep, so we've got our dough balls wrapped in wax paper. We're gonna stick these in this bag, and then this bag will go in the deep freezer. How many pies can you make with one of these? Each one of these will make a top and a bottom crust. So if you just have a bottom crust, you could make two pies? Yep. Like 12 inch pies? Yeah. If I'm using those little pie pans that I have that I like to make pecan pies out of, and you guys will see that when we do the pecan pie video. Yes. I can actually get my, maybe two and a half or possibly even three out of one of those balls of dough. It all depends on how thick or thin you uh, yeah. roll it. I like it not too thick because like I said, I want the, the filling to be the star, but I also don't want it so thin because pie should be finger food, just pie, like your well, pizza. Well, most pies. I think yeah. pumpkin pie should be like a handheld food and, and not, you know, a like fork food. Anyway. But a cream so, pie would be kind of hard to eat that way. Yeah. Here's one of our bags of pie dough. This is one batch. Now you don't have to make this much. This is just how much we made. We'll give you a recipe so that you can know how much would just make yep. like four crusts. So you have already seen the recipe card for the pie dough. If you don't want to make this much pie dough, 
you can cut the recipe in half. This is, I'm just gonna give you the recipe for what we make and you can cut it from there. Um, later, soon, you'll be able to see us roll out a pie crust. And then coming up later in the coming weeks on the channel, you'll be able to see us make some different kinds of pies. We're gonna make pumpkin, we're gonna make pecan, we're gonna make apple, and if you have any special requests, leave those in a comment on this video so we can know what you wanna see so we can make those for you. But for now, I'm gonna set down the camera because we're gonna make some more pie dough, and then later, we'll roll one out and make a pie. We started this, I think, at like 11.30. It is 1.15 now. It's 1.15, now. and we have used up uh, three and a quarter pounds of butter because I had a, lo a lonely quarter pound that wanted to do something and wanted to participate, and so I put it in the last batch. And probably about 10 pounds of flour, maybe eight pounds of flour. Um, probably a third of a tub of that uh, butter shortening. flavor and shortening. And, you know, whatever, salt and water, ice water. And one of these, this one I think is the one that was in the Yeah, in the this one's been freezer. in the freezer because it's cold. So what we'll do is she wanted me to roll one out for you. And we pre-make our filling for <laughs> pumpkin, pie. pumpkin pie. So this is pumpkin pie filling from 2019 that's been living in the freezer. Just waiting. Yep. Now it'll take probably an hour for this brick of basically frozen raw pumpkin, pumpkin custard. pie custard batter. It's not obviously cooked. Nope. It'll take about an hour for it to unthaw. Now, if no, you put it in just the refrigerator. Thaw, not unthaw. Okay. Unthaw means unfreeze. freezing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thaw or unfreeze. Now, I usually like to put it in the refrigerator and let it thaw, um, but it does take longer. So, depending on how hungry your, your little people are, <laughs> you, you might want to go fast. And I'm demanding yeah, she, this pie. She, she likes that pie. Gently, but I'm demanding it. Okay, just because. so... Um, I have my pie plate. I like either a, a you know granite or marble or quartz. Marble quartz, something because it's cooler and it doesn't have a lot. Uh, it doesn't hold the heat. Yes. I like to just lightly dust my pie plate because then when I put my dough in there after it's rolled out, it's easier to reposition it if you need to. Then I like to have a little place where I'm gonna put it. On a clean counter. Yep, it's all cleaned up, everything's clean but, but me. <laughs> now I just, you know, would tell you, use more dough than what you think you need to. So if you're not sure, just whack it in half. Now I'm pretty sure how much dough I'm gonna need just because I've done it before. And this is a smaller pan. That one definitely is. And I like to kind of form it and shape it. Now this is the stuff, the first batch that we made, because there's like a, a batch and a half in each one of these. But this stuff is about an hour and a half old. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. young. It's young. And so it, it might or might not work up as beautifully as I'd like for it to. I like to go around the circle and kind of get the edges the way I want them to be with my thumb. And then you take your rolling pin and you just roll it out. And your rolling pin is a marble rolling pin. Same reason, because of the heat factor. Now if I've got bread, I, you've, if you've watched our cinnamon roll. Link in the description box. Then you know I have a great big wooden one that I got from my dad that um, I use for bread. And that's different because we don't need the butter to stay flaky in the bread dough, no. right? Right. And I know that there are purists out there that like the rolling pin that just looks like a wooden rod or a wooden the dowel. dowel. But I prefer <laughs> these. Yeah. I like the big wooden one for, for rolling out uh, bread dough and cinnamon rolls because it covers such surface area and I'm able to get um, a nice even roll from it and then I like the the memory and the story behind it my dad was flying on Southwest Airline which is one of my favorite airlines we always called it the company plane and um, 
This was been back in the mid 70s, back when you could practically take anything on the plane, but that rolling pin was so big they made him check it because they thought it was a weapon. <laughs> I like to fold it in half. I know I did that really quick. I didn't even think about it. I like to fold it in half and then you can position it. Now, if you're not sure, this is pretty friendly dough, so we'll, we'll do it again. Okay, so you got your pie dough rolled out and I always like to cheat and see, is it gonna fit? So I like to just lay it there. And then if you're really not sure, you can kind of fold it up. And then you can, when you put it in, in your pan, then you can see how's that going to stretch out. And you know you're going to want it to go from end to end, like so, and from end to end. Now, uh, I'm more of a ruralist than I am an artisan. And by that I mean I don't really flute my edges the way some people do. I just take my knife and whack it off. Like Snow White. Yeah, just like Snow White. I talk to the animals too. Well, Ask any of them, they'll tell you I'm very polite. But you don't ask any birds to stick their dirty feet in your pie crust. No, I make the birds wash their feet before they stick it in the pie crust. So then, you know it's gonna shrink back a little bit, but I, kind of like my pie crust to be a vehicle and like I said not necessarily the star if you're making a fruit pie like we're going to show later you do want a little bit of a nice crust on the top of your fruit pie um, and dust it with some sugar and put your little marks in it that's yummy that's yummy so this pie crust you can do a couple of things you can feed your chickens with it you can put it back with your pie dough and recycle it and use it. You can lay it out flat and bake it, and that's what, you know, put some butter, of course, and some sugar and cinnamon on it, maybe nutmeg, uh, maybe some cardamom. And call it a pie cracker. We call pie crackers. Yep. But if I'm making a whole bunch of pies, getting ready for the holidays, I will just recycle it and work it back in. Now you have to be careful when you work it back in that you don't always work it into the same spot. Now we're, all this is going in the deep freeze so it doesn't really matter. And this is going to be obviously different than that. So when I go to use it, I will work it in and try to use up all of this with the very next pie. The more often you roll it out and use it, the tougher it's going to get to so the point you don't want to recycle it anymore and you will have leftovers that you just have to waste and throw away. So you just want to recycle it once. Yeah, it's best to just recycle it once. And then after that, make your pie crackers. Yep, and feed them to your family. Most of the family is usually very agreeable and mendable to eating your mistakes. And then the pie crackers disappear and it's like it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got your beautiful pie crust here if you're, you're worried about a soggy bottom, you could pre-bake this a little bit. It's called a blind bake, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you would want to put something in there. They have beads and you can put beans in there. I like the one that's uh, you know on a long chain so that you can put it in there. I don't usually pre-bake. I don't know if it's because I put the flour in the bottom, if it's because I start with a hot oven and then I turn it down. But I generally don't have too much trouble with a soggy bottom. But this will wait patiently. And we'll put some wax paper over it so it doesn't get dried out. It'll wait patiently in the refrigerator freezer. And maybe that's why I don't get the soggy bottom. Because I usually work with really cold dough. Could be. That would make sense. But this will wait in the refrigerator freezer. And then when this is defrosted, we'll just put that in here. And we'll show you that after a little while. So we've got our oven preheating. This is defrosted. She's pulling out the pie crust we rolled out earlier. Yeah, and it's it's waiting patiently. As you can see, it's it's pretty you know, stiff. It's frozen now. And that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. There we go. We'll just bake it just like that, right? We don't let it thaw out. Nope. Nope. And I wonder if that's what helps me keep from having an issue with the soggy bottom. I don't know, but something makes makes a difference for me. So when you go to put your filling in there, you know, you don't want to overfill your pie. 
This is like pie making basics. We're not teaching mm. you how to make the filling just yet. Yeah, but we will. Yeah, in another video. Yeah. I have some secrets, but I'm not a very good secret keeper for making well, stuff like that. Because I she believes in sharing to... family recipes. Yeah. Because, you know. What if something happens? It makes it. Will know. I think it's special to share. Yeah. It's cold, let me tell you. Well, it looks like it's still frozen, frosty. Yeah, it was very frosty. But it's got the seasonings and the. Yeah, we'll show you how to make this stuff in an upcoming video. Probably sometime in early November-ish. And I like doing that the same way because then when you get to this point, you know, it's pretty easy. If so, if your neighbor, you know, has something happen and you're thinking, oh, I'd sure like to give them a pie or it's kind of like, you know, we have casseroles out in the refrigerator or excuse me, out in the deep freeze so that if somebody has a life event and they need some extra help. Yep. Um, if you can, which I can't right now, I like to have the thawed stuff in the middle. I in like the frozen to, in, the, mm -hmm. in the outside. Yeah, because that's going to cook the la least. The, that will cook last. Yes. <laughs> if it's a like a, a uh, fruit pie, you do not want to overfill your fruit pies because those are going to bubble up. This is a custard-based pie. It will, should not boil. It should not, so you don't want to overfill. And you can tell it's going to be right up to the brim but all the way okay. around, but that's going to be okay. Because it's so not going to bubble up. The pie is frozen. The stuff is kind of frosty. The oven is not hot yet. It's, you know, still like what? Uh, it's 160 degrees. So they're going to kind of heat up together. And it will do, as the oven heats, it will defrost the pie and then it will bake the pie. And I'll show you how to know that your custard pie is done because you want it a little bit of wobble when it's done. Not too much. You, you don't want it to be fully set when you take it out of the oven. No, because it'll crack. And if your custard pie cracks, that's because it got overbaked. Huh. Cool. All right. So how long? About 40 about, minutes? About 40 minutes. Okay. So you guys will see us in 40 minutes. We all agree. The consensus is the house smells wonderful. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what you're looking for, that, see that, that is too much jiggle. Too runny. Too runny. But because, you know, we've done this a time or two, we, we forgot to set the alarm, and so we just go by the smell and the jiggle. It's actually been 40 minutes. Okay, well, that's probably about right because it was frozen pretty frosty. So do you give it five more minutes, 10 gonna, more minutes? I bet it's gonna be 10, so I'm gonna set the timer for seven. Okay, and then check it. Uh-huh. All right, still baking at 325, convection? Yes, yep, convection 325. Cool. All right, the timer just went off, but I had to turn it off because it was driving me insane. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we're really close if we're not there. Because see how the whole thing has kind of risen up? We're close. That's still too much jiggle in yep. the middle. But I am going to turn it down a little bit. Because you don't want it to become dark on top. You just want the inside to bake. Yeah. So she's turned it down to 275 convection. Convection, which is 300. There's about 25 different degrees. Now this is my first, first pie baking experience with this oven. Now the oven that we had before. In Missouri. In our Missouri house. I knew that oven to within five degrees by where I set it. And it may not have read true to the temperature, but I learned from that oven of what it said the temperature was. So then when we moved down here and I baked in it, the new oven. In our last house. It, it, didn't, it didn't cook right. So she had to relearn how to bake. And it really made me mad because it I thought, did. I set the temperature right. And when I talked with the oven, the oven said, yeah, but the temperature you set it at is where I have been baking at, and that's the wrong temperature. That's why your food's not done. So Every oven is different, and convection ovens are different from regular ovens. If you have a convection of oven, pan. yeah, if you have a convection oven, a convection oven works sort of like an air fryer. An air fryer is basically a smaller version of a convection oven. 
and a convection oven just has a fan that is constantly blowing hot air onto your food. A normal oven is just a hot box. There's no fan, but the convection oven is a fan, meaning your food generally cooks a little bit faster. And so you can usually lower the temperature and bake it for a shorter period of time because not only is the box hot, which is radiation heat, but it is also convection heat where the hot air is moving across it, which is different than conduction heat, which is how I think this works. I think your this kind of surface top is a conduction heat. So it's all different kinds of heat. Radiation, conduction, convection. Anyway, learn your oven. Sometimes it takes a little trial and error and that's okay. Just learn your oven. That's what we're doing today because we're this is like pre-pie baking season for us. We are in mid-October right now, and generally we don't start baking pies seriously until the end of October to the beginning of November. And then we'll bake pies till right around Thanksgiving, and we'll bake some pies after that, but not that, you know, free-for-all marathon pie baking. Yeah, we marathon pie baking, and I will vlog some of that. And then we do the marathon bread and rolls and cinnamon rolls. Around Christmas time. Yeah. But, um, oh, I wanted you to talk about salted butter versus unsalted butter. We didn't do this earlier today. Okay, let's talk about it for just a minute. What kind of butter did you use in your pie dough? I used salted butter. I pretty much only used salted butter. And you still added salt to your dough. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are anti-salted butter and you have to have some salt. And I it made how many of those loaves of dough, those little dough balls, and only used about one tablespoon of salt. So there's not a lot of salt in there. And I would rather there be a little salt in the butter so that when you get the flakiness, it leaves that salt residue behind rather than have the salt mixed all through the dough. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to get you get it, that little taste, you get that little burst of salt. So the salt in the butter kind of helps disperse the salt flavor a little better than if you and add it yourself. It modifies the butter flavor, and I, you know, salt helps bring out flavors. You yeah. don't want so much salt that you just can't eat it because it's too salty. But if you don't have any salt in your food, it's, it's really slang. missing something. Okay. All right. So there you go, and we've just got a couple more minutes on this guy. Time for right. one more check? Yeah. All right. Yeah, and I have to back off because, you know, the steam hits my glasses and falls them <laughs> up. All right. Oh, so close. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. We are close, but we're, we backed off on the heat so we're not burning our ends and see how it's just kind of, this is like, it's not boiling, but it's raising up. Now, um, we just want to make sure we cook it really carefully so this part gets more done. And why you want it, and we'll show you in just a few minutes, because it will take on a little bit more bake after you bring it out. It will continue to self-cook because the rest of the pie is really hot. Yeah, there's residual heat left in the outside of the pie. Are you going to draw us a picture? No, I wasn't. Oh. Um, I wrote some notes down on this terrible piece of paper. Um, but we've cooled the oven down because we had the oven door open too long. So where it might have just taken two minutes for it to finish baking, it'll probably take four. The oven's got to bring the temperature back up. And while I had your undivided attention, I wanted to tell you that if you're trying to put your pie dough together and it's like, it's just falling apart, you can't form those uh, dough balls. And I don't know if it showed or not, but when I was forming some of those balls there at the very end, you could see that there's stuff crumbling off. Now I usually do that over the bowl so that stuff falls in the bowl. Um, but I did it over the wax paper and then I just put that stuff back in there. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it doesn't have enough moisture and you have to have that water in there because the water is going to get hot and steam and helps form those layers with the butter because the steam is going to lift those layers up. So if it's falling apart, it's too dry. If it's too tough, you worked it too much. You want to just, you know, get that stuff to that mealy consistency and then sprinkle your water and then lift it together with your hands 
you don't want to use all your fingers just use your hands gently to work that in there don't overwork it because it'll make it tough if it's mealy it could be that your flour is too old or maybe you should have sifted it because some flour does cake it's been shipped you know from wherever to wherever and it's been packed on top of other cases of flour stop rewind if it's too tough if it's too tough how do you go how do you come back from that what do you do can you fix it no i don't think you can fix it if it's too tough you could make pie crackers out of it and put a scoop of ice cream on it you can feed it to the chickens but <laughs> i don't think you can repair it if it's too tough if you've overworked it you you know put the fingers in there and you you know made it into trying to make it a batter instead of this gentle care and caress of the pie dough i don't think you can repair that if it's mealy feeling it may be that your flour is too old or maybe you should sift your flour because some flour has been shipped and stacked in the store even though it's not outdated it needs to be sifted to let let it come kind of come apart so it's not caked and packed down um, if it breaks apart when you're putting into the pan you it could be that it's too dry it could be that it doesn't have enough fat in it but most of the time it's because you're not nice to it you know i and i know that it looked like i was just flopping it around here on the countertop after you've rolled it out yeah folding it up when you try to fold it though it just comes apart and it could be any one of those problems that's making it come apart but if you're not really practiced with you know use of your hands when you're getting ready to put it in your pie pan take your rolling pin and roll it up over your rolling pin and then use the rolling pin to lift it up now I've done fine just you know folding it in thirds and kind of flopping it in there and I think you know you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly now if you think I'm gonna practice because I'm gonna buy some store-bought dough that stuff doesn't work very well it does not handle like real pie dough at all I know it's real pie dough, but it doesn't handle like homemade pie dough at all. It's not very forgiving. That stuff will break on you. Um, if it shrinks, like all, I think all pie dough is going to shrink some when you put it in there. But if it shrinks a lot, you didn't let the dough rest. You need to let it rest. You know how I was showing how you could make it real pretty and you could do the fluted edges and I just whacked it off. If you don't let it rest in that pan, and I think that's part of the exercise of fluting those, and you can use your fork, you can get your bird from outside and clean his feet and have him <laughs> do the fluting at the edges, you can do the pinch, you can do it on your knuckle. Part of that is so when it shrinks, you still have that nice edge and lip on there. But if you, you know, freeze your pie dough, if you let your pie dough rest, you won't have much trouble with that shrinking, but chill it and let it rest. If it's too pale, it's just underbaked. Really, to bake a very pretty crust, you want it about you want a hot oven. And if you look at most uh, fruit pie recipes, it says a hot oven anywhere from 400 to 450 to get some color on that crust. Whether you do that at the beginning or the end, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference. I usually will start with a hot oven and then cool it down because I've been baking all day long. But if I just got a frozen pie out of the deep freeze, like an apple pie, and I'm gonna bake it, it's probably gonna go in a cold oven and I'm gonna bring the temperature up and then it'll be hot at the end because it'll, you, know, you wanna cook your fruit at 350 degrees and then when you're about 10 or 15 minutes from the very end, that's when you're gonna crank that heat up so you can get you that nice brown crust. And then I think we've already talked about the soggy bottom. Now you can kind of cheat on your soggy bottom because it could be that your crust isn't done. So cook it in a glass pan and you can always kind of peek underneath to see if you've got a pale bottom or not. If um, you're cooking a fruit pie, good luck because a lot of times your fruit pies are going to be moist anyway and there's just not much you can do. I mean, you can par bake it, you can pre bake it, you can put an egg wash on there and put it back in there and I just don't know that it's worth all that. So what I do is I bake it in a cast iron skillet and that helps me keep from getting a soggy bottom. So those are my two cheats on the soggy bottom. Glass bottom and cast iron, cast skillet. iron skillet. Lots of tips and tricks. That's very helpful, Mom. You're welcome. Oh, it smells so good. And that's just what you want. See that tight little jiggle? That is perfecto. It doesn't look watery or runny. It looks nope. like a little bit of a loose jello, sort of like a jello jiggler. Yeah. 
And so if you put it on a trivet, if you put it on your stove top, that's gonna continue to bake just a little bit. Don't put this on your stone countertop because this will suck the heat right out of your pie and it won't allow the center of your pie to continue to cook. Yeah. But you see how you got just that perfect little jiggle in there? That's perfecto. So we'll show you in a few minutes when it's finished baking and it's cooled down, because right now it's, you know, 300 degrees. You'd scald the inside of your mouth if you tried to eat it. So I'm gonna have dinner. There's steak in there. Ah! So I'm gonna have dinner. And then maybe when I'm done, we'll, it, we'll have pie. Yeah, we'll have pie. I was going to show them. This is what I use. Here's my collection. Yay. Cast iron skillets galore. A lot of these have seen a lot of pies. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so it's, um, it, yeah, that's cooled down quite a bit. And you can see how earlier it was kind of puffed up a little bit. But now it's more smooth because it had some heat and, you know. Steam. Yeah. Um, oxygen, hydrogen, you know, a couple of molecules of air air in huh. there from the steam, from the moisture in this that we're heating it up. We never overfilled it. And if you remember when we poured it in there, we thought it's going to, it's going to be okay. And it is, look how perfect that is. Even right there, it didn't, it didn't boil over. So we're ready to cut it. Yay. You got to get a sharp knife. Do you ever use a serrated blade? Um, I don't. I just like a smooth edge. I agree. And you can see it's not wobbly. Nope. And we did no. not put this back in the oven. Mm -mm. This continued to cook after we took it out because of that residual heat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so excited. A test piece. Let me get a... Well, the first one is always ruined. So I, this, should, this one should be mine, the second one should be yours. Because I should eat, always eat the one that's destroyed. You think? Yeah, I think so. Now usually what I do is I take out this piece and then she says, okay, that's mine. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> da da da! Ta da, look how perfect that is. And it smells, it smells so really good. good. Yum. Wow. And it doesn't need this, but it doesn't hurt to have this. So I think it needs a little bit of Right? I think so too. Ta-da! I think it's perfect. Mmm. That is good pie. We will show you or give you the recipe for that in a coming vlog. Now but we'll for let, now, we'll let Auburn get a, a bite of pie. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. That is yummy. Yum, yum, yum. Yum. All right, now let's get, we'll take Emma a bite of pie. Now Emma's going to get a little bite of pie. Mmm, oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Glad you like it. And look who else feels left out because she'd like a bite of pie too, wouldn't you? Oh well. Not for bad. you. Yeah. It's Not for, for snow. you. It's for Snow White. So we've had some pie. We've made a pie crust. We've made a bunch of pie dough. And now we're all going to have pie while you guys go back to whatever you were doing. Yeah, so that's it for this vlog. We've made pie dough, now you know how to make pie dough. If you have any requests for like fall pie recipes, then we will gladly make them. We've got three pie. I'll do my best. Well, we've got three pie videos planned. Yeah. We're gonna show you how to make pumpkin. We're gonna show you how to make pecan. pecan. And we're gonna show you how to make like an apple pie, but we can do a different kind of fruit pie. Yeah, we can do If some you other, request that. We can do some other fall fruits in addition to the apple and some variations of apple and a few variations off the pecan. Yeah. But I'd like to hear what you guys have. Yes. And how do you make pie dough? We're, we're curious. But for now, that's gonna be it. You guys will see us in another video really, really soon.